In Jesus' most agonizing moments before his crucifixion, he commanded Peter, James, and John to watch and pray. Jesus then went on to moments of fervent prayer in the garden. Unfortunately, those disciples failed in their assignment, and Jesus found them sleeping instead of praying. In this study, Evangelist Scott Pauley will lead us and challenge us to watch and pray, to pray faith-filled prayer for God to move and work in our generation. Be sure to listen after the study for details about a special prayer resource Scott is making available through this series. And now, let's join Scott Pauley. Watching and praying is not just about keeping your eyes open. Watching and praying is about keeping your heart awake. And so today we go to the heart books, the devotional section of the Old Testament, and to the Psalms, specifically to Psalm 102, because in Psalm 102 we find a beautiful picture of what it means to watch and pray. You remember that in our last study we got a historical picture from the book of Nehemiah. Well, today... We get a devotional picture from Psalm 102. And there's a little title over Psalm 102 you should pay careful attention to. We do not know exactly who wrote it. Some people surmise it was David, but it's not expressly said that it was David. Here's what we know. It was someone who was having a hard time. Uh, maybe you can put your name in there. <laughs> maybe you say, that, that fits me today. The title of the psalm says this, a prayer of the afflicted when he's overwhelmed and poureth out his complaint before the Lord. And some of you right now are saying, hey, this one is for me today. Afflicted, overwhelmed, full of complaint, all right? The question is not, do we get there? We all get there at times. The question is, what are you going to do when you get there? You know, I've often wondered, these psalms were meant to be sung. It was lyric poetry. What the, the tune of certain psalms were. Was it melancholy? Was it in a minor key occasionally? I don't know. We don't know the tune of the psalms, but we do know the tone of them. And the tone of this psalm moves from brokenness to joyfulness. It moves from uh, great burdens uh, to understanding where the victory comes from. Let's read the opening verses of Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I'm in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Let me pause and point out, you know somebody's in a bad shape when they forget to even eat. We love to eat. We live to eat. He said, I'm in such bad shape. I don't even think about food, not even hungry. Verse 5, by reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I'm like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Now, do you hear the, the key words? In verse 1, my prayer. In verse 7, I watch. Connect those two in your thinking. And notice both of them are personal. It's my prayer. I'm the one doing the watching. And he gives us a picture in Psalm 102 of a little bird. In fact, there are three birds in Psalm 102, verse 6. I must be getting old, but even from where I'm sitting in my study, I love to look outside and see birds at certain times of the year at the bird feeder. The cardinal is my personal favorite, but he mentions three birds that, frankly, I think, why are these three birds grouped together? The pelican of the wilderness, the owl of the desert, and the sparrow on the housetop. May I tell you what all three of those birds have in common? They are all lonely birds. The pelican, alone. The owl, by itself. The little sparrow, single bird, sitting alone. Do you see uh, the, the picture here of loneliness? Are you ever lonely? You may feel lonely today. I want to remind you, if you know the Lord, you may feel lonely, but you are not alone. Practice the presence of Christ. Acknowledge him. Don't, don't ask him to come. He's there. He said he would be with you to the ends of the earth. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Why don't you pause and say, Lord, I thank you that 
you're here with me right now. I read the story recently of a woman who was just distraught, uh, the death of a child. Now she lives alone, uh, just absolutely broken. And the famed preacher F.B. Myers said, Madam, when you go home tonight, uh, reach your hand over where your daughter would have been and say to Jesus, Jesus, I know you're here with me. Sit down at the table. Though you're by yourself now, sit down at the table and say, Jesus, I know you're here with me for this meal. And he met her some months later. He said her countenance had totally changed. She said, I'm a different woman because recognizing the Lord was with me changed everything. When we're lonely, what, what should we do? Pray. Talk to the Lord. He's not only lonely, he's in danger. Uh, predators are after these lonely birds. Uh, what does he do in danger? He watches. So connect this, the prayer and the watching. Specifically, he says, I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Why the sparrow? We're all little sparrows, aren't we? Do you think it's any chance then that that's the exact picture Jesus used in his gospel record? Uh, can you listen for just a moment to Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 26? What a, what a beautiful, beautiful expression. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? And then in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 29, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. He said these sparrows were so cheap, they would sell two of them for a farthing. Nobody thought about one of them. And yet Jesus said when one sparrow falls from the sky, the heavenly Father takes knowledge of it. And then he turns around and says, but you're of more value to him than many sparrows. You may feel like a little sparrow today, weak, susceptible to the enemy. You may feel like a little sparrow sitting alone upon the housetop, insignificant. But I want to tell you, on the authority of the word of God, you are loved. You are cared for. Your father has his eye on you at this moment, and his ear is open to you. Yes, you may feel like the sparrow, but even the sparrow has a wonderful father. You may feel like just a little wounded child today or a weak child today. That's all right as long as you remember who your father is. I would point out to you that Psalm 102, this psalm that we're looking at today, is a messianic psalm. Christ is the ultimate example of one who, in apparent weakness and a difficult seasons, watched and prayed and the Father took care of him, and the Father will take care of you. Sevilla Martin and her husband were visiting friends, the, the Doolittles. And Mr. Doolittle was in a wheelchair, bound to a wheelchair. Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for 20 years, and yet they seemed perfectly happy and content. Sevilla Martin asked Mrs. Doolittle one day why they were still so cheerful in the midst of all their difficulty. And that precious bedridden saint said these words, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Sevilla D. Martin would go back and write that famous hymn uh, using those very words. Uh, yes, the Lord is watching you today, and he wants you to watch him. The God whose ear is open to your prayer just wants you to pray. He's in tune with where you are. He wants you to be in tune with him. Watch and pray. Watch for opportunities to pray today. Let everything be an opportunity to pray. Watch for objects to pray for. Let every person you deal with, every decision you make, every difficulty you encounter be turned to prayer. Watch for opposition in prayer. Know the devil's going to try to stop it and the flesh is still weak. But ultimately, watch for the outcome in prayer. Pray in faith, believing that God is going to hear and answer your prayer. Pray expectantly. Pray believingly today. You may feel defenseless and very alone. You may be weak and weary and wounded. But you can watch and pray and know that God is watching you and hearing your prayer. Are you guilty of the sin of prayerlessness? Do you know the mechanics of prayer, the form, the right words, but struggle to pray, to have a consistent prayer life? Scott would like to provide a resource for you that he believes can help create habits of prayer in your life. His resource, 30 Days of Prayer, is available for download on our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and also in the show notes. 
We thank you for listening, and we hope you will join us for each lesson from this series. And may the Lord help us as we seek to have a consistent prayer life. Thank you.